What's going on guys? Christian here from CK Wraps. Today I'm going to unveil the coolest gloss vinyl wrap carbon fiber that I've ever seen in my entire life. It's an air release carbon fiber vinyl wrap. It's sitting right here beside me. You can't probably see it from where you're sitting, but I'm going to show it to you today by installing the entire hood on this Jaguar F Pace. I'm also going to be doing a full PPF over top of it to protect it. That video will be on my website, ckrafts.com. The link is in the top corner and the description below for you guys. I'm also starting my own brand, which is going to be unveiled very soon for PPF. And I'm going to be doing training. So if you guys are looking for training, the links are in the description below for PPF and color change. Let's get into this actual carbon fiber wrap. And I'm gonna show you a few different carbon fiber vinyl wraps that I've been using for quite a while that look Great, but not as great as that. Let's do it. So let's start off with uh, the carbon fiber that I have right here, which is Hexus Carbon One. This is a printed carbon fiber vinyl wrap. Okay, you can see it, it's glossy. The pattern, eh, it's, there's not a lot of depth to it, but it's glossy, it looks nice. This is good for accent pieces and so on. I wouldn't recommend wrapping a hood in it. It's a little bit too much. Um, because when you look at it very closely, and again, I'll bring it in one more time. When you look at that very closely, you can see that it looks printed. And it is. The other carbon fiber that you may have seen in a more recent carbon fiber video, and you know, this is like the search for the best carbon fiber, basically. You know, I've been looking for a very long time for something that isn't a dry carbon fiber. Dry carbon fiber is so boring. I have some on the hood over here. Uh, let me actually just grab that because it's super, super, super boring. I've got a piece right here kicking around. Um, so I wanna show you guys what this looks like because it's just not that interesting. But this is like the original generation of carbon fiber, okay? This is matte, regular, boring carbon fiber. You can go on the floor. Not due to the brand, just due to the fact that it is Boring. This right here is beautiful in my opinion, but not as beautiful as what I have behind me. So this is a, this is Vivid's epoxy carbon fiber. It's super nice. Uh, this has a cap on it, so that's why it looks like a mess right now. Castle had this for a few years, so it's been sitting here. This is also great for interior pieces and so on. It's got a lot of depth to it. it looks really nice. This is multiple layers, and it's in my opinion a little too gray and it doesn't have that realistic weave that we're all looking for. Put that on the floor too. This right here is, like it's so deep, I can't even believe that it looks the way it looks, but you guys be the judge. We're gonna wrap the hood today and we're gonna do this right now, all on camera for you guys and show you how to do it. I've never used this vinyl right here. So this vinyl, if you wanna know the brand, is Tiny Bot. And this is a brand that I've been asked about a lot of times recently. Uh, this brand has been out for who knows how long, but I've heard about it now for quite a while. This is a polymeric vinyl. So is the other gloss, one of those other gloss carbon fibers that I have right there. It's also a polymeric. What does polymeric mean? Polymeric, if you wanna know more about it, I have lots of install videos of polymeric films on my website, ckrapps.com. Generally speaking, polymeric is not a cast vinyl. A cast vinyl is a vinyl that is more expensive to make, um, typically could last longer. Um, but the most notorious brands that we know that make a cast vinyl are not a full cast vinyl. Avery, 3M, these are not full cast vinyls. The only brand that I know that makes a full 100% pure cast vinyl is Oracle. That's it. Orcal's colors could definitely use an update. It's super boring, and that is my personal opinion on that. But that's why I don't really use them, because nobody asks for their boring Crayola color book colors. Uh, they need to update something. Anyways, this is innovative. It's different. It's new. I haven't shown it to you in person yet, but uh, I'm tempted to bring it in. Let's bring it in for you and show you. Why not? This also has a protective cap on it. Now, you're not going to get... You're not gonna get the same idea right now as once it goes on, but I'm gonna open it up a bit for you because it's probably a little bit tough to see on the roll. All right, this is insanely deep. 
I don't know if you guys can see that. This has a cap on it, okay? This cap has to be removed. So polymerics tend to be a little cheaper. By how much, it varies. Are they bad vinyls to install? No, I actually love installing polymeric vinyls. I've, install I've been installing polymeric vinyls for so long. Only the uh, professionals don't like using polymeric vinyls because it's too difficult for them. Ah, that's gonna cause a lot of problems. Uh, but anyways, again, that's what I've seen, that's what I've heard, and this is how it goes. So a lot of professional businesses and wrap shops, they don't wanna use a polymeric vinyl because they're afraid to use it, basically. They don't know how to use it, they're afraid to use it, they don't know, that it's too much work, and so on. I've never used this, so we're gonna find out how to do this today uh, with this particular brand. But I've used many polymerics for a very long time. Let's get the film over to the Tremax Pro, and we're gonna cut this out. So this is my nice cutting machine from SignMaker Tools. Love this thing. Does a really good job. It measures everything out and cuts. Doesn't cut it for me. I still have to cut it myself, but it has a cutter on it. So I'm just gonna tighten this roll back up because it loosens slightly. I'm gonna make this cut straighter. So I'm gonna trim off just a bit of that and fall to the floor. What I'm gonna do now, I need to measure the hood actually. Uh, I do know how wide it is, but we'll measure it anyways. Let's check it out. Oops. So let's check it out. Let's do a quick measurement and I've already wiped it. This is the tape measure that's broken, but that's all right. So I'm gonna go right about there. And there is no, uh, this car's not magnetic. Uh, like only the doors are magnetic on this thing. Let's go end to end and Check out the measurements so you guys can see it more or less on this end over here. Like probably saying in the, in the entire video there. 70-ish, 71-ish. It's actually less than that. 70, let's go 75. It's good. It's about 69 inches wide. Let's go about 75 and cut that piece out. I'm going to give the hood one more little wipe off afterwards right before I wrap it. This beautiful machine right here. We reset the, reset the counter, we make sure that the wheel is touching the roller, and we roll this thing out. And we roll it at 75. As we roll it out, we can roll it up. It's also a vinyl storage rack, which helps a lot. I'm keeping things where you want them. Perfect. 75, done. Easy, right? Didn't have to put it on a table, didn't have to do anything else. So you can see the cap is getting a little bit messed up from the roller. It's totally fine, I'm not worried about that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a speed clip right now. We're going to just tighten that up slightly and we're gonna clip it for the time being, rest it right there. I'm gonna give the hood one more little wipe off. Again, I'm just using 70% isopropyl alcohol. I wiped this down already. We've wiped underneath the edges, the edges I'm not really concerned about right now. I just wanna make sure that there is no dust, debris, particles, or contaminants on the surface of this panel because obviously it'll show through. It's also not a bad idea to do a clay bar on the actual surface of the panel. Why? Because it's gonna remove, remove other impurities that might be on the surface like tree sap, insects, and so forth. This car is very new. And it's just a rental. So not to worry about anything, it's just a rental. And I'm doing this video on a rental. I'm wrapping their hood on a rental. It's not that I can't get anybody in here to do this stuff. It's just that, uh, why not use a rental, you know? I'm not trying to uh, discount anything here and I need to do a video on the fly basically just to show you guys because I was super excited about this. Uh, I just finished up a three day workshop actually. And we had one last week for five days. Take our speed clip, let's remove it. And let's keep the bottom edge that was on the floor, right down here, at the, at the bottom edge of the hood. You'll see why. I'll explain why in a moment. So let's take this, drape it across. Again, we can't use magnets here. I would love to use magnets. God, this stuff is amazing. Uh, I'm gonna explain a few things about this vinyl. This vinyl is not perfect. I already know this. So I was, I was speaking to the owner of the company and one of my website members had asked to you know, 
can I can I get this? Can I can I get some in? Can I see what it's like? Yeah, here we are. We're doing it right now. Now, this film is more prone to getting water between the laminate and the carbon fiber. The lam what's the laminate? The laminate is the gloss layer or the layer that's put over top of the actual carbon fiber to protect it. It's kind of like, think about clear coat for your paints. Similar. Except water can get between this. So how do we prevent that from happening? So I was speaking with the owner of the company and they were saying that they are very close to releasing the newer product where water doesn't get between the laminate. But this doesn't mean that it doesn't work right now. Okay, so what could, what could cause water to get between the laminate and the actual film itself or the texture of the film? This is a multi-layer vinyl. This is not just like a single, it's not a print. It's not like one layer. There's multiple layers here to give this the actual depth that it has. Why can water get between it? Well, that's because it's not sealed properly. That's one thing when it's, when it's laminated. Um, the, the reason why you would get water between it is due to the fact that there might be an exposed edge. So what's an exposed edge mean? And if we wrap around all of our edges and all of our corners and everything else really nicely, which we're gonna do right here in this video, we don't have to worry about an exposed edge other than a stone chip. That's why we're gonna PPF it. If we PPF over top of it, it is going to be basically bulletproof or stone proof in that sense where we don't have to worry about a stone hitting it and causing damage. Now, what does a real carbon fiber hood cost? And what is the purpose of a real carbon fiber hood these days? Is, a real, is the purpose of a real carbon fiber hood to make your car into a Pagani? No, it's definitely not. Uh, is it gonna save you any weight? Nope, it's not gonna save you any weight. Why? Because this hood right here is aluminum. And this hood weighs like six pounds. It's super, super light. Even the hood on my Jeep, my Jeep Gladiator. I can pick that entire hood up with two fingers and hold it above the ground, no problem. No strain on the shoulder, nothing. It's not even close to 20 pounds on my Gladiator. This hood, similar, it's gonna be extremely light. So are we saving weight by switching to a real carbon fiber hood? No, not anymore, not these days. If you have a steel hood, okay, it's totally different. You're gonna save a little bit of weight, but what are you gonna pay for that? The cost to wrap the hood and even PPF over top of it is going to be cheaper than a real carbon fiber hood. And you're gonna get the same look, except with the PPF, your hood is going to be scratch proof. So you're never even gonna get scratches. How amazing is that? You never have to wax it, you never have to polish it, you never have to do any of that stuff because PPF is self-healing. This is why I love what I do. All right. So before I take off the cap, because the cap is a little bit rigid, I'm just gonna roll the release liner off. And this film could be really sticky, it might not be sticky. I have no idea what this is gonna feel like right now. I have not installed, I just cut off a sample piece and I have not installed this at all. Okay, we're gonna roll that right out just like this as nicely as possible because we don't wanna get any creases in the film. Let's take this corner off. Now that we're getting to the end. You guys probably still can't see this yet. Just, I wish it was light outside because I would show you what this looks like outside. You can't because it's not light outside. Okay, we've got to fix this. This is easy. This is, this is nothing, okay? I'm going to do this alone. Lift it up. Okay, the initial tack's not bad. I didn't put anything down on the surface. You saw that to make it less sticky or anything like that. It just is what it is. And I still have still have the protective cap on it. The protective cap, you can't install it because it's not pliable. It, it would be nice if it was pliable, but it has to come off because it's not pliable. So I'm just lifting it up and putting it back down because I can right now, but it might actually help to just take the plastic cap off. Let's do it. I need a bit more pliability. Okay, before, I mean, before I do anything else, I'm just gonna bring the camera in because this looks wild. And I want you guys to see everything. Like, I want you to see that I'm not gonna switch this out for a real carbon fiber hood or anything like that. Like, this is 
absolutely insane. Even with a paper backing, this is the coolest stuff I've ever seen. It looks real. There's no joke, there's no question about it. It does look as real as possible for a sticker. Like, I mean, even as far as carbon fiber goes, this looks as real as possible. I can't imagine it being or getting any better than this. Perhaps, maybe using a PET release liner, that might help. Make it a little bit more glossy. Regardless, it's nice. Okay, let's lift it up again. And let's go all the way across. And now I can get a little more stretch out of it. See that? Now, what I also like to do is use a little detail spray usually. Let's pop this up. Always pulling against the wrinkles. I'm actually just gonna lift here. Nah, that's nice. I like that when it goes all the way across like that. Beautiful, look at that. Okay, so I'm gonna use a bit of detail spray right now. I'm gonna grab some Wrap Fresh because this stuff is awesome. This protects the film. It's not a bad idea to change the buffer on your squeegee, which is that little blue thing on the end of mine. And let's squeegee this, okay? Squeegee that out, squeegee that out. Start from the middle, always work your way out. Air release works fine. I'm not, have, not having any issues with it yet. Of course, it's gonna get caught. It's not a pressure sensitive vinyl. So eventually the air is going to get caught. That's okay, we're used to this, right? right? Because we install Hard films, easy films, and all films. Because it makes you good at what you do. I'm gonna open that end up. I'm going to run the air out a lot easier with an open, with an open end like that. Cool, super simple, how fast this is going. I'm just gonna flip this uh, little screen here. Can't see anything. Okay, right. I'm gonna make sure you guys are all on camera. Squeeze you that out right there. Let's go here. I'm gonna lift that up just a slight bit. Is it vulnerable to lifting? Nope, I haven't noticed that it's causing any like imperfections in the film or anything along those lines. It's super easy to use. As it goes right now with me. Let's push down on some bubbles there. Let's get them out, cool. And then on the back window edge area, I'm going to just cut right about there. And that's gonna help me to lift and get access to this area here and get the air out. Okay, we're looking good. Love the smell of that spray, it smells really good. Let's go here, pull these wrinkles down. Let's throw this up, pull that up just like that. And then we're gonna find a nice center point right there. That's all we need. Come down, always squeegee out the air that's in the largest, flattest area. This is gonna prevent you from having to deal with too many bubbles and so on. Oops, I left one right there. Let's take that out. If you squeegee out the air in the largest, flattest area, it's going to prevent you from dealing with a lot of trapped air. Because again, when it's not a pressure sensitive film, all films, as they do have air release, they're just going to trap air. That's what's gonna happen. All right, go all the way through there. It doesn't get, honestly, it doesn't get more realistic. I'm gonna move the camera a bit just to give you a bit of a more front view here. I want you guys to be able to see everything and I'm gonna get my heat gun because we're, we're gonna need to heat it and stretch it. It's not like we're not going to. Maybe I can get the camera a little bit higher. That's about it and maybe even zoomed in. Let's do that. All right, let's get this right about there. Cool, that's more centered. Not get rid of that. All right, what are we gonna do next? We're going to get rid of these wrinkles, this bunching of vinyl over here. How are we gonna do that? We're gonna pull it out to the corner. So when I lift, I snap the film up. Lift, snap the film up, just like that. Now that's okay that that lifted there. We can put this back down. This is all about dispersing tension and so on. We're trying to spread out tension and excess film. 
Let's go a little bit here. There we go. Pop that up. I'm, I, I'm so used to using polymeric, man. Like it's this is this is nothing for me. If you can use a polymeric vinyl, it's gonna open so many more doors for you. So we're gonna heat this, and I'm just gonna keep a little tension with my left hand. So I'm not I'm not stretching the film. I don't want to heat it to kill it. I'm trying to heat it so that we're gonna see the wrinkles run towards me. You're gonna see them right there. I'm chasing them towards myself. My left hand isn't moving right now. Okay, so I need to fix up just this spot right over there. There we go, because it was touching the hood too much. I like the things to be a little bit more flat. And then we have this one little inconsistently, inconsistency right there. Let's keep going. So again, I've never used this before, so I'm, I don't want to heat too much because I don't want to maybe Maybe it can damage, I honestly have no idea. Right now though, I'm pulling the carbon fiber weave the opposite direction of the actual carbon fiber weave because the carbon fiber weave runs that way. So if I stretch it too much towards my direction, we could be spreading out the carbon fiber weave too much. And you can see I'm not moving my left hand, but we just chased out all those wrinkles past, most likely past the edge of the hood, which is the goal. Okay, let's take this, grab it, pull it tight, and spread the film outwards. And bring it down nice and slowly. You see, I'm not in a rush. Who's rushing here? Nobody. Okay, what we need to do is squeegee out the flattest area, and I need some detail spray for that because it's gonna glide better. Get some wrap fresh on that sucker right there. That's gonna help it glide a lot nicer. Beautiful. And then up top here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull the film tight to the top corner. Just grab it. There we go, let's pull it tight to the top corner. Beautiful. Amazing. All right, let's squeegee this upwards all the way. Let's go here. Oh, got stuck a little bit there. See what happens when the vinyl settles? It's okay. We can always get those air bubbles out because there is an air release channel all the way through the film. All right, so I'm gonna close this gap slightly between the high points and I'm gonna heat this area. We're gonna squeegee it right down and in. This stuff is wild. I have no idea if you guys can even see this yet, but this stuff is like, just wild. through, make sure we're being nice and thorough and consistent and even. Yeah, what's a real carbon fiber hood gonna cost you? In comparison to something like this, it's gonna give you the exact same look of a carbon fiber hood. I mean, I feel like carbon fiber hoods are just gonna go extinct. I'm, go I'm going to also do a separate video on the mirrors, because why not? Okay, so here we're gonna pull these wrinkles the opposite direction, cool. As always, we're always pulling the wrinkles the opposite direction. And I'm just kind of getting that side situated a little bit there. Like it even looks so real, like, cause real carbon fiber has like some dark areas and some light, anyways, you'll see it all in the end. Like it's just, this is insane. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna lock in this edge over here and make sure that we're fully past the edge of the hood. And as you might've noticed, I left the hood popped I like to uh, when I wrap the hood because it actually makes things easier when we go to do the edges and stuff. Wow, unreal, guys. Wait till you see the contours. Like I'm excited, I'm really excited to show you all this stuff. Just wait until you see these contours. It's insane. All right, let's lift up from the edge here. I don't want to be adding tension to it, so let's just lift a little bit. It's just my style. We're gonna let the final drop down really nicely. Done. Again, the way more detailed videos of this stuff on how to actually install on my website, guys. All right, here we got some wrinkles. We're gonna fix them up, and then we're gonna move along. Just gonna add a little bit of heat right down here. 
keep the film tight. Cool. We're going to spread those wrinkles out just slightly to the left and the right. And that's going to aid in longevity of the edge. Beautiful. Beautiful. Like, other than some streaks on there right now from the wrap, fresh and my squeegee, it's going really well. Let's go over here now. Okay, same thing all over again. I'm just looking. I thought I saw some air. Don't see any air. Okay, thought I did. Put it in a streak or something. Let's lift up from here. And a little bit up from here. Okay, same idea. Pull the film tight. Pop it up. I'm going to pull it tight again. Pop it up some more. Again, 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 again. Now, as long as you didn't have you know, some greasy, greasy fried chicken or something, you're gonna be okay to, to grab underneath the film. Now, do I even need to add heat? I mean, I don't know, guys, you tell me. It helps, but did I, do I really need to add heat? Honestly, don't think so. I think I can just pull a lot of this without even adding any heat. Now, how crazy is that? That just went flat and smooth. Let's throw some rat fresh here. Again, this is just to reduce friction. I like the aroma, kind of addicted to it. And pull this out to this corner over here. Amazing. Let's start from the bottom. Let's get all of the air pushed up to the top. Let's get that bubble out of there. There we go. I don't want to have too many bubbles. We don't want to have like the more bubbles you have, the more likely it is that you might get a glue line around that bubble. I mean, if it was 3M, you're definitely gonna get a glue line around that bubble or even Avery these days, because Avery is not holding it down. All right, let's go right here. Let's finish this off. I'm gonna close this end off right now. We'll fix this. Let's do the recessed area. Slight bit of heat, pressure with the palm, and we're gonna get this stretched in there. This is a very minimal recess, guys, so we can stretch this in. I would actually highly recommend simply stretching the film into this area because it's such a low recess and you don't have to worry about it popping out. It's still not a bad idea to post heat it. Cool, that's done, just like that. Wild. I'm gonna heat right around here from this edge though this time, not from as far as I did before. Why? Because I feel like I don't, I didn't need to stretch from as far as I did before. Let's cut off a lot of film here. We have way too much. Let's cut all that off. Put that away. Right here, okay? We're gonna go from this line and we're gonna keep the film tight. If you stretch over a larger area, it's usually a little bit better because you're less likely to uh, distort the film. So if you're newer at this, then it's usually better to stretch over a larger area. But do you need to is the question. Most likely not. So we're just gonna keep this flat and tight and pulling out to the left and the right. And the edge of the hood is like right here. It's literally right here. It was, that was a hundred times easier than the other side. But we're learning as we go along here because I've never used this before. So I kind of, expected it to be a little bit harder and potentially lose its finish. But hey, we just tried something else out on the other side. Does it make the, does it make each side inconsistent in its finish or its look? No, as long as that doesn't happen, we're good. You can install it any way you want. Come around that corner there. Let's seal this off. And then right here, we're gonna do some pre-shrinking. So that, because polymerics love to shrink, as long as we pre-shrink before the edge, we're rocking. Look at that. I just shrunk down all on its own. I didn't do anything. All right, uh, let's keep going along here. Uh, let's seal up this edge right here all the way down as we did before, pretty much the exact same thing, except I wanna make sure that this is nice and tight. Cool, let's fix up there, and we have a little bit of extra material right there. There we go, okay. Cool. Just a matter of working the film towards the exits. All right, we're gonna heat this area here. We're gonna stretch in all over again. 
I've already measured this to be less than 20% stretch, so we're good in that sense. Staying under 20% is ideal with any brand. I don't care if they say it's 30 or 50. 20% is definitely ideal. And let's push through. Let's heat and push through. Well, all I'm gonna do before I get to the ends is just make sure that I have no tension on the edges. Is it gonna pop out of the recess? Hell no. But making sure I have no tension on my edges, yeah, that's, that's, that's probably the most important. Okay, so I just lift from the edge, I squeegee the film down, and it's going to go down really nicely and very easily at the edge. We're done, like this hood is wrapped. How long did that take to wrap it? I can't even tell you because I talked too much in the beginning. So I can't even click the screen to see what the timer says because uh, it's not gonna be accurate. All right, so let's, I got a little wrinkle right here. So we're gonna pop that, pop this area up. We're gonna pre-shrink it again. I'm not gonna do anything, I'm just gonna hold the film. It just goes away. I'm gonna just, all I'm gonna do is smooth it out. If we have no tension on our edge, the vinyl can't fail from the edge, it's impossible. It's not just gonna magically lift off or pull off as long as it was cleaned. And as long as you didn't overstretch the film, it's not gonna just magically pop off the edge. Especially when we do the last step of heating it and making sure that it's down and looking good. This is, I mean, I can't wait to show you up close to this. I really can't. I'm leaving about an inch on the back side here. So let's take this off, just like that. Let's, uh, what can we do? We're gonna lift the hood. I had a box right there. We're gonna put the hood on a box. So I'm just gonna lift off of the, all the edges, the fender and so on. Make sure that I can lift the hood. Cool. That side looks good. The hood's already popped, so it should lift up really easily. I have one speck of dirt right there or something. I didn't, I didn't clay bar this, this hood. So again, it's just a rental, so who cares? All right, so let's lift this. Okay, so that kind of released it a bit. It's still stuck somewhere. Where are we stuck? All right, right there, okay. Let's grab that again. And we're stuck down here. And we're stuck somewhere else. Where, where are we stuck? Do I have to pop the hood again is the question. I don't feel like I should have to. But it could have latched. It's very possible. Give me one second here. Ah, no, we're good. All right. So we're just going to kind of leave this here. I'm going to grab the box. And I preferably like to have the hood all the way up when I do the corners. So you know what? What I'll do is I'll show you the one corner on one side. So let's go over to this side over here and show you what's going on over here. I mean, you can, now you can start to see this stuff. That's just ridiculous. So this, having the hood up to do the corners makes a lot of sense because I have access here, right? Tons of access. It's not always the case. Sometimes the corners of the hood drop down behind the fender as we lift the hood up. So in that case, it makes it more difficult. Now what I like to do is I like to push the film down with a polymeric while it's cold. It's right there on the edge of the, edge of the corner. And then I'm gonna start my heat from the inside. We're gonna work our way across. You're gonna see that all that vinyl change. Okay, and then as I, let's keep it down. As I get down around the corner, boom, it kind of shrinks down and around that corner. Just does it on its own. Now I'm gonna take the extra step and massage the film down and around that corner. This, this corner is done. Like this corner doesn't need anything else. There's not a single wrinkle there. There's nothing there. Let's keep going and finish up this edge here. It's a little bit hard to reach. You stay out of your way. Heating and sealing these edges is gonna be important with this if you want it to last at this moment until TinyBot comes up with the new version, which will be anytime now. But this doesn't mean this doesn't work. Let's go over this edge, cool. And let's keep going. Let's go right back here. And let's just heat from the top. You can see it's all nice and smooth, right? This is a good sign. There's no wrinkling. And what I'm doing right now is I'm pre-shrinking the film. So the vinyl is just shrinking down around the edge. So I'm gonna push down on that corner there, nice and tight. We're gonna finish this off. 
Now, there is a little lip to this side of the hood right here. Do I have to wrap it? I mean, you can wrap it if you want to, but you don't really need to. I'm sure if it's a real carbon fiber um, hood, that it's actually, that's all gonna obviously be carbon fiber too. So I mean, maybe you want to, maybe you don't. I mean, do they even make a carbon fiber hood for an F-Pace? Maybe they do. There's an SVR, so it's pretty, uh, there's a likeliness of that happening. We'll go across all of this, all at the front. Let's go, let's bring the actual hood down so you guys can see. I want you guys to be able to see everything. So let's take this, put it on the box. There's good. Just some dust and lint on there. Let's finish up all this. Let's do this corner here. Boom, like it just shrinks. Polymerics, when you get them in the right spot, they just shrink down around the corners all by themselves. All I do afterwards is add a little bit of pressure and massage that film down and around that corner. That's, it. That's all I gotta do. I don't have to do anything else that makes it more complicated than that. Same thing here, take it. It's gonna just shrink down around the corner. I'm gonna apply a bit of pressure, done. It's just beautiful. Now with the edge, the bottom edge of this vinyl wrap is facing, if you wanna put the hood down, it's gonna be facing away or downwards. Is there a chance that water can get underneath it? I suppose, but it's very, very low. Like what kind of a force would it need for the film to actually get water inside of it? Like coming from the front end. I mean, yeah, we drive fast, but do you drive like 200 miles an hour in the rain? Maybe some of you do. I don't know, but I don't. Um, and even then, is that enough force with just the wind and the rain to actually get the water up under the edge? I kind of doubt it, to be honest. It's different if the, if, if the, um, if you get a stone chip, you know, if you get a stone chip and, you know, water comes in from the top side, okay, that makes sense. You know, that could happen. That's why we're going to PPF it. Let's do this corner here and we're almost ready to cut. Just going to finish up this last little edge and uh, we're going to cut this thing off, wipe it off, cut it, cut all the excess off and then wipe it off and then see what it looks like. There is, you know, you might get some swirl marks and stuff like that. They, they do self-heal, you know, this is, this is vinyl wrap. It's not, it's not bulletproof, but it does self-heal. All right, there's a little droplet there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut. I'm going to cut with the hood sitting like this. Why not? Let's cut from the back over here. This is a good spot for me to have a little bubble there. It doesn't matter really. I could, I'm taking this off afterwards after doing all the PPF and everything for it. I'm gonna run my knife along the back edge, underneath the edge. And it's easier with the hood sort of down like this because I can get my blade in a really good angle and then come around the corner really nicely, really tightly. Come underneath here. Is this the best way to do it? Say, I don't know. This is how I always wrap. And to me, this feels like the edges are all sealed up and no water can get in and underneath. So it's underneath the hood and they're facing the opposite direction. Okay, so let's keep going. Let's keep running along here and adding tension to the actual film to create a nice, clean, straight cut. When I'm done, this is gonna look like a carbon fiber cap put over top of the actual hood. This is how clean it's gonna look. Okay, let's go. I actually prefer the hood up higher. Let's just cut this off so I can do that. And I'm gonna put the hood up because it's, it's much easier to do a cleaner job when, I ha when I'm comfortable. Let's just angle the camera slightly. All right, there we go. So pulling down on the film makes a nice clean cut. Wasn't that great right there, actually, that kind of sucked. That was my fault. Let's go. And you just want to stay close to the edge on the underside edge. Again, the edge of the film is facing away from the water. So what could get underneath it? I honestly couldn't tell you. Try to do it in as few passes as possible. My knife isn't even touching the paint. My knife is gliding along 
the flat part of my knife is gliding along the actual paint. There's no points or anything that could scrape this paint when I'm doing this. There's no points on my knife that can scrape the paint or cut it. You'd be surprised at how many professional shops put the actual tip of the blade to the paint in areas like this. You got a Ferrari? Hey, no problem. We're putting the tip of the blade to the paint underneath the hood of your car. Hey, it's what it is, you know, industry and standards and so forth. So I just like to do things a little bit differently. And then let's finish off this last cut under here. It's going to be a little bit more tricky because the hood's on an angle. The box is still there. I'm going to put the hood down. It's going to be easier for me. Super easy to cut. When you have a nice sharp knife, it takes no effort. All right, guys. This hood's fully wrapped. We have one more step to do. We're just going to heat it and finish up the edges. And that's going to be it. So I might as well start over here since I am here. Just clean them up. After cutting it, it's always a good idea to heat the edges and lay them down. I'm heating them point blank, nearly point blank, whatever point blank might be to you, but I'm within an inch or two with a 1500 degree heat gun. down firmly on those corners and I'm always heating from the underside especially when I'm heating this much like, or this closely I don't want to burn the film because you can all right guys this hood is wrapped so let's put the hood down see what it looks like let's get the camera back a little bit I'll bring you in nice and close in a second I want to wipe it because it's got a little it's got a few streaks on it and stuff Let's get that out of the way. Let's close it entirely. And let's give it a little wipe off. Let's grab the rag. Let's grab the wrap fresh. I'm gonna use some wrap fresh to wipe off the wrap fresh. Cause why not? It's for this particular purpose. What I'll also do is go over it with a heat gun just to you know, heat out some swirl marks that might be there and so forth. Cause there's probably some. I don't really see many, but there probably is. There probably are some. I want to soak this with wrap fresh. I want to try to, you know, get it off and on kind of at the same time where it's, you know, laying down really nicely. Give it a nice little polish with the wrap fresh. Now this stuff is actually pretty cool because I was using it in the workshop and I was trying to clean it off of the wrap, like with 99% alcohol, it wouldn't come off. So this is like your temporary ceramic coating and uh, it does work really well. It doesn't come off that easily. I, like, I was pushing hard with 99% alcohol on the wrap that was already on the car, it wasn't coming off. All right. Personally, if I were to do this again, this area, could have been done differently. If I was to do anything else differently, there wouldn't be anything else done differently. I did everything else the way I felt like it should be done after doing the first initial, first initial stretch here from this line. I could have definitely brought it over to here and did it the same way I did as I, same way as I did it over there. That is the only thing that I would have changed. Let's go over this with a bit of heat. I'll bring you in with the camera to give you some depth and uh, perspective of the actual finish and the wrap. Remember, this is a sticker, guys. This is not real carbon fiber. So, you know, you want to save weight. You want to go spend a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars, two thousand, five grand on carbon fiber. Go ahead. Just to what? Save no weight and have a real carbon fiber hood because nobody's going to know. I mean, it's it's other than other than the strength of real carbon fiber. Most people aren't taking their car to the track. So what does it really matter? I don't know if this is enough heat. I'm just kind of going over a bit to see if some of the swirl marks may heat up. I don't really see a lot, like I said, but we're just going over it. It's also not a bad idea to heat it up a bit, you know, seal up some of the glue, but you don't really need to do this. I'm just trying to 
clarify the film right now. Now, when I put PPF over top of this, all the scratches are gone. So anything, any swirl marks or anything that I see right now, or you might see, when I put PPF over top, it's going to go, be gone. You know what I'll do? I'll put a small piece of my PPF over top of this and you're gonna see. It won't dry properly or fast enough, but you're gonna see that it won't have any scratches. I mean, not that you can really see many anyways. Let's bring the camera in guys, I'll show you what this looks like. So I'm gonna kind of bring the camera back a bit and let's just move the tripod over also. All right, let's bring this back and show you what the entire carbon fiber hood wrap looks like. That's insane gloss. Does it look good on this car? I have no idea. You guys can be the, the judge of that. This, and again, it has some swirl marks in it, has some scuffing. It's gonna happen. We have friction. Outside, am I gonna see that? I have no idea. This is the most realistic carbon fiber I have ever seen in my entire life for a sticker. The lines that you're seeing across, that is the reflection of the rafters and the roof. It's that. So just so you're aware, I, cause I can see them. So I'm kind of thinking like, oh, maybe you guys are thinking that it's something else in the film. It's definitely not. It's, that's how glossy it is. Okay. Check it out. Wow. That looks like a real carbon fiber weave to me. You want to tell me that this other brand right here, which is nice. Oops. It's nice. But which one's better? I mean, this is nice but it looks fake. That does not look fake to me. Like this looks real. I, I don't know how they make this stuff. I can only imagine, but that looks 100% real to me. I wouldn't know any different. And as I was saying, like real carbon fiber, you know, as, as we look at carbon fiber, it's carbon, real carbon fiber is kind of patchy sometimes, like kind of, like you see the carbon fiber and then, and by patchy, I mean, it's not deliberately patchy. It's just, you can see the carbon fiber here, and then up there it's kind of darker. And as you move, the patches are gone, but that's what carbon fiber does. Like this. I, I hope the camera's picking this up because I really think that this is impressive. Next, we're gonna grab just a little bit of my PPF. So let's do that. And let's throw that down on the carbon fiber. So I'm gonna throw that down on the driver's side there to show you what it looks like with some PPF over top. And I'm just putting it on the driver's side because I can see this, the scuffing or the scratching a little bit more from here. So this is just baby shampoo and water. We're gonna throw that down there. We wanna peel off the release liner. So let's do that, let's wet it. And it's not gonna dry entirely, it's okay. I don't even have the proper squeegee to do this with. That's okay again. Let's throw that down there. And this is where I noticed when I, when I was showing you guys in the video, and I'm sure you'll see it a little bit better in the 4K once it's blowing up on like your TV screen or whatever on your computer on YouTube, you're gonna see it a little bit better. So I'm not using the right squeegee for this, but this is what I have in my pocket. I'm gonna grab, push, I'm just gonna push a little bit harder. It's not the best squeegee to do this with. And I'm gonna wipe it. And we're gonna see what this looks like with PPF over top, just to show you. What's nice about PPF, again, is that this is basically scratch proof. Let's get this out of the way. Let's dry this off a little bit. Now, it has to dry, like I said. The, there's gonna be a slight bit of haziness to the actual PPF. And we've got a couple of dirt things under there, but that's okay. You gotta make sure the PPF is clean. I wasn't trying to impress anybody with this. We're just trying to make it so that we're gonna see what the PPF looks like over top of the carbon. And this is the stuff that I'm gonna be showing you guys how to use it. Okay, so I'll bring the camera in right now, but I'll bring the camera in in another minute or so and show you what this looks like. It's a long video, uh, in almost an hour. What this looks like right now. So you can see it's a little bit hazy, okay? I can see it. And I didn't use the right squeegee and I just threw down, I don't know, whatever's left in that shampoo bottle right there. It's not exactly what I want to be doing, but scratch wise, okay? So scratches, we can see, we can see swirl marks here, okay? 
You can see them. It's not, they're not that bad. We can see them. Over here, nothing, even though I just squeegeed it. So like, like I said, it's a little bit hazy because it's going to dry. But otherwise, and anyone who installs PPF will know this, but otherwise, that is completely scratch-free. Look at that. That's super close. I have the camera sitting on the actual wrap right now. <laughs> no scratches. So this is the benefit. The benefit of it, so no scratches, but also, and it's, it doesn't take long to install the PPF on, on a hood, guys. It's one of the easiest areas of the vehicle to PPF. So the benefit is it's going to get rid of most of the swirl marks. You're not going to see those. On top of that, it's not going to stone chip, which means you're going to seal the wrap entirely that's on the hood of this vehicle. Also, if it scratches from washing it, they're going to go away with heat. Let's take a steel brush, or sorry, steel brush, a brass brush and scratch the PPF. They're not, this is a brass brush. We're not supposed to be even using something this abrasive, but this is just to show you. Is it all going to go away or is it not going to go away? Let's, let's, let's hit it. Let's actually bring the camera in so you know that I'm not cheating. All right. It's right here. We're, we're in. I'm going to scratch it right here. Are they all going to go away? Probably not. But you would never do this to your wrap or your paint or anything else or your PPF even. No idea if you guys can see those scratches. But... Uh, I'm going to try, let me try to find a camera angle to show you guys. Okay. Where are they? I saw them from my angle, right? They're here. I just can't see them on camera. Uh, anyways, we'll try. Yeah, oh, I can see them on camera now. Okay. Let's bring the camera back. Let's heat it. See what happens. Look at that. There's one scratch right there where my heat gun's pointing at. Otherwise, 98-ish percent of them all went away. And that was with using metal on the wrap. This is, the purpose of PPF is more like, you know, when you're hand washing it or taking through a car wash and so on, the PPF is going to self-heal. It is not meant to take a brass brush and scratch it with. Though I guess it could happen. <laughs> You can test that brass brush on almost any PPF and 98, 99% of the scratches will go away. That's what PPF is supposed to do. Almost every PPF. There are some PPFs on, out in the market that don't self-heal, believe it or not. That's actually crazy because it kind of defeats the purpose of having PPF um, other than just from impact on stone chips. But you're not going to get the self-healing part of it. That's kind of useless. Anyways, guys, I hope that this video in showing you the TinyBot 6D carbon fiber was informative, helpful, and detailed. If you're looking for more PPF videos or you wanna sign up for a PPF workshop or you wanna learn how to wrap, check out my website, ckwraps.com. All the videos are there. Disassembly, open forum discussion board, one month free, whatever it is, it's all there. Teach you how to wrap, I'm there, that's me, it's nobody else um, answering questions and doing those videos for you guys. Again, thank you for watching. I appreciate it very much. Take care.